justice for all. I just have a quick uh, thank you I'd like to make to uh, the uh, donors of the uh, bike path. Uh, the city met its goal, and uh, this just, I think it's a wonderful testament to the generosity of this community and the importance of the bike path. And I just want to say, say thank you to everybody uh, involved in that project. That's all I had, uh, City Manager. No comments this evening. Okay, roll call. Mayor Peterson. Here. Councilman Thurley. Here. Craig. Here. Alexander. Here. Aiden. Here. Borzikowski. Here. Double. Here. Under the required public hearings, item 2.1 is the municipal consent for the Highway 43 bridge project. Declare the public uh, hearing open. And uh, Mr. Ward, uh, would you like to open by saying a few words? Mayor Peterson, council members, I want to thank you for having us back tonight for this uh, formal public hearing. Uh, my name is Terry Ward, the project manager for Minnesota Department of Transportation. With me tonight is Dave Nelson from SRF, who was actually the design manager that put the layout together. Tonight we're here to talk about municipal consent. Municipal consent is basically approval of our geometric layout, as, as you can see on the boards. Um, municipal consent is, is, is required for any time we acquire right away change access or affect traffic capacity. This is really a five-year effort from, from a MnDOT perspective. Uh, meetings and planning for this particular project started roughly five years ago. There's been extensive um, Winona community involvement, including helping define the project purpose and need. The primary purpose of the project is to provide a sound structurally crossing, uh, crossing of the Mississippi River. The Winona community was involved in project scoping, uh, which includes the rehab and reconstruction of the existing bridge. And why that's important is the existing bridge is Minnesota's only surviving example of a cantilever through truss dating from before 1946. It's the only remaining through truss example of a cantilevered um, bridge dating from before 1946. Our project scope also includes a new bridge, a concrete segmental box girder with um, concrete beams approaching. Our scope also includes several important traffic uh, aspects of it. First of all is traffic capacity improvements. The projections, the 20 year projections after the project is open out to 2038 show some very significant traffic capacity issues that need to be addressed at 4th um, uh, in Winona at Hoff and Forth. So those are potentially part of our scope as well. And also the intersection of Forth and Winona has some um, current safety issues there that will also be addressed. Two weeks ago I was here talking about the partnership and the lessons that I've learned in my career managing project. And that partnership is, is one of the foundations of this project from, from my perspective. I mentioned the goals for the project being start construction on the new bridge as soon as possible move traffic to the new bridge as soon as possible, keep the river um, crossing open during construction, and also to meet our funding cap of $142 million for the project. So again, I mentioned our responses at that time. We moved up the start of the project. We picked a, a new procurement method, a new project management team, and we believe we've created a, a procurement schedule that allows the maximum amount of time for affected businesses that we're going to acquire during the right-of-way process for them to, to go look and seek other, other locations. One last thing real quick in my, just my introductory comments is um, I gave you a handout of our visual quality committee. We're, we're proud that there's 18 members that have spoken to volunteer for that committee and the roster is there in front of you and we're scheduled to start that work next week. That's a very important part of our process and we look for the visual quality committee to develop recommendations that will come to city staff and potentially if you want at the council over. I'd like to have some at the end some closing comments so with that um, I'll just close and be available for questions during the hearing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else that uh, wishes to speak this time? Come to the podium, state your name and address. 
I'm Dennis Meyer, and I'm the chair of the Wano Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors, and I'm speaking on their behalf tonight. Um, just that the business community supports an updated crossing with the additional truck traffic that our businesses generate and need to deliver our products or to get our supplies in. We need a very viable crossing here in Winona. Um, the chamber supports a four-lane crossing. Um, the current crossing must not be closed to traffic, so I'm glad to hear that that's one of their goals. Um, it's very important that the safety of the current structure is also maintained and managed during this time to make sure that it still contains and still remains a safe structure while the new structure is being built. And then we look forward to the rehab of the uh, existing structure. Thank you for your commitment and your consideration and the support for MnDOT. And I, I would encourage you to uh, vote to, uh, for consent for them to continue. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Donald Lowe Peterson. I live at 1460 Gilmore Valley Road, one owner resident. I also own Mississippi Walner Supply with operations in three states and realize how vital that bridge is to us. And I'm in encouraging you to go ahead with the support of building a new bridge, a most effective one, cost effective, that will give us a long lasting bridge for the best value for the dollars. And in concert with that, ensure that the truck traffic going onto it and coming off it can have an easy access onto the routes leading into and out of the city. As I've said before, I'd offer to give you any of your ride through the truck traffic routes through the city if you'd like to see how it looks from the perspective of a semi. Other than that, I encourage you to vote positive tonight. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm uh, Dee Sipo. I live at 474 Glenview Court in Winona. And um, I was at the meeting last Monday and I stated that the bridge certainly did look good from the picture that they showed. And, and I do think that this is a, an attractive entrance to the city that was blockaded a little bit more the other way. But um, since I've been retired, my major emphasis has been on volunteerism for the city of Winona and to promote the city of Winona one of my major ones being the Shakespeare Festival. And I think we are definitely becoming an arts and culture destination. I have many friends that come from Utah and the Twin Cities and they are always impressed with what they see here. And so I, as a result of that, I think that we need to keep in mind that we need to have an attractive entrance to the city of Winona. And if this concrete um, box girder is going to be an attractive entrance to Winona, then I think that um, the council and the MINDOT needs to listen very closely to the uh, visual quality team. Because as I did just a very rough drawing of the bridge, and I walked across it several times, um, including looking at it this uh, on Friday when I volunteered for um, Ragnar. And I was there at 3.30 in the morning as the sun was beginning to come up and it was beautiful looking at that bridge. And I thought, we have brought people from Chicago, the Twin Cities. They started running at 5.30 and the last runners went off at four. Where did they look when they started? They looked at the Mississippi River and the Winona Bridge. And that's what they saw, and I'll tell you, it looked very attractive, and it was nice. But if we put up a bridge that's going to cover a good share of it, as I see, um, I go up about this far from my measurements <laughs> on the um, little pictures that I saw, um, it would cover a lot of it. And when I'm downstream and I drive from the Minnesota Marine Art Museum, which is one of our major attractions that I take all my friends to, this is what they would see a lot of. Now on the other hand, if you listen to the visual quality, if this is indeed the bridge we're going to have to have, they could cut it down by putting something visually attractive, I think. So if you do invoke, indeed vote yes tonight, because I think you're looking at wanting to get this done, quickly, um, and we're looking at speed, we must consider the
the visual quality. And the visual quality of this bridge, I believe, can be improved. And don't let that be dropped. Thank you. Thank you. Else? I'm Thomas Mauschewski, and I live at 1671 Value Drive. I've lived here all my life, and I've practiced dentistry in the city for the, well, for 30 years. I've paid taxes, and I continue to pay taxes, and I will pay taxes in the future. But I'm concerned about our city. I would say a very poor decision would be to vote on the discussion to accept the proposal as submitted by the Minnesota Department of Transportation. Not only is a new interstate bridge proposed, but we're also refurbishing an old bridge. The prison bridge has seen its full life and continues to have symptoms of aging. It should be replaced, but the word replaced in my mind means demolished. Why are the, cities, the citizens of this community obliged to pay approximately $150 million for a new bridge construction and refurbishing of the old bridge? It's logical to spend $75, $75 million in construction for the new bridge portion, but if you're spending almost the same amount of money to reconstruct and refurbish the old bridge, I think that's a poor money decision. It's a waste of our money. In 30 years, the bridge that is being refurbished will probably have to be replaced again. And we hope and pray that it would match the newly constructed bridge, which I'm not sure exactly what it will be in the future. But I would not suggest that we send this money, spend this money for refurbishing the other bridge. I also ask myself, why are the six people in Washington, D.C. sort of deciding their decision as to whether or not we keep the old bridge. I think it should be removed. I do believe it's our money and we ought to spend it, we ought to spend it constructively. Once the new bridge is constructed, the beauty of the former bridge and the original bridge will be diminished because the new bridge and the proposed reconstruction, they really don't match architecturally and the heights are different. So therefore, the beauty that we see presently as we drive over the bridge is magnificent at this point, but in the future, it's gonna be a little obscure. I state that, why don't we just build one new bridge, don't worry about that reconstruction of that other one at this time, and let's make a cable state bridge that would enhance the beauty of our Mississippi Valley. It will enhance the um, merits of coming to Winona, and uh, it increases our visual acuity. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? Come to the podium. Well, I'm Leon Mauschewski and Dr. Tom's wife um, and lived here for 43 years as his new spouse when we first arrived here in 1970. I've given a lot of thought. I've gone to all the MnDOT meetings, I believe, and um, I've pondered the uh, decisions that are made here. I've looked at the geometrics. I've studied different things and different aspects. Um, and I tell you what, this is not a done deal yet. We have, you have, the decision to make something really critical for our community for maybe a hundred years into the future. And so I don't want to take this lightly. Um, I, like um, Dee, um, looked at the visual quality of what was going to be happening with the different types of structures and from the MnDOT's presentation of the different options that they presented. 
And even though this is the last remaining bridge of its type in Winona or in Minnesota, that doesn't mean it's the last remaining type of bridge in the United States. We're not talking about the Brooklyn Bridge or our bridge that's on the west coast, the um, really Golden Gate Bridge, which we all have embedded in our memories. But those are historical, architecturally well-designed, <coughs> extremely important monuments for the country, for our federal government, and for our st those states, and for all of us as citizens. I'm saying that the design, engineering, and I acknowledge their work. I acknowledge that the small member committee in Washington, D.C., who has probably never stepped foot in Winona, Minnesota, really can't quite grasp our locality and the importance of the river and the river crossing in Winona. The bridge that we have now is old. It's just old. It kind of reminds me of the old erector sets that I had when I was a kid, to be honest with you. Um, I've enjoyed the beauty of it over the years because you could see the sunset coming through or the early morning sun. And I've appreciated its qualities and um, enjoyed its appearance. However, we have to remember that when MnDOT goes ahead and reconstructs or fixes the old bridge, it is still going to remain fracture critical. That means that it could collapse and it could fail at any time. Meaning that, you know, we have safety issues with constructing or reconstructing the old bridge. And it currently doesn't meet federal or state standards for width and possibly load-bearing qualities and for capacity. And long term, the last meeting, they said it would only last roughly 30 years. The new bridge will last maybe 100, but the reconstructed old bridge will only last roughly 30 years, and then we're going to have maintenance issues after that, and maybe it'll have to be demolished anyway. And even though I really hate to say goodbye to good old friends, and I've lost a lot of good friends, human beings, and it hurts, and I mourn for those losses, and I would mourn the loss of this bridge, but I've had to move on. <coughs> and like the wisdom of the historical society, the county historical society, and you, Mark, you decided instead of copying an old building in Winona to put on to the existing armory, you chose to move into the future with a new structure in this century something we can be really proud of, something new and exciting for our community. And as Dean mentioned, we're getting more tourist, tourist people interested in our community. We have more activities. And this is the golden opportunity for us to enhance the beauty of our city for years and years to come without having any interference with an old and a new, but rather we could construct a four-lane, brand new, state-of-the-art, aesthetically gorgeous bridge to usher in the new century, 
and to bring in tourism and attraction. And it's not like that old bridge doesn't exist someplace else in another state. It does. It was built at a time during the war when they had materials that were less quality and less durability, as we now know that it, it can collapse and it rusts and it gets old. And we can patch again, but we're going to be sticking more money in. And as MnDOT said, it's going to cost us more money to restore the old bridge than to create the new one that's going to be right next to it. And I think that we need to use our tax dollars prudently. We need to plan ahead for the future. We need to provide for the current standards, much less the future standards and requirements. So I am very concerned that we're going to be making a very expensive tax dollar investment in something that's just not going to last as long as we'd like and interfere with the beauty of what we really want to retain and that's being able to see upriver and downriver and have a beautiful four lane gorgeous brand new structure that makes a statement for the state of Minnesota and for Winona. So I want you to take that into consideration and to really think prudently and sensibly about how we expend our tax dollars now and into the future because that old bridge is going to need more repairs in the future and it's going to cost more in the long run on down the road. So I leave you with the thought of reaching forward into the future instead of hanging on to everything in the past. So I thank you for your consideration. I thank MnDOT for all of its hard work and effort. But I would propose that we can reconsider and really think about maybe making a brand new, aesthetically pleasing, new historic bridge for the state of Minnesota and Winona. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? Step to the podium. My name is Jeff Morgan. I'm one of your uh, Wisconsin uh, neighbors, if I may be allowed to speak. I am a Minnesota taxpayer, and I've worked uh, in uh, the Winona area public schools for 15 years now. Um, I'm an art teacher, and I consider the plans uh, for the Box Girder Bridge uh, functional, but not aesthetic. Um, I, I believe the present designs might be an invitation for tagging, as, as many of us have Notice graffiti on boxcars passing through Winona on similar vertical structures. Uh, and while this is uh, highly illegal and wrong, I'm afraid um, th this kind of activity is present on, on the present bridge. And when things are easily within reach, uh, sometimes that sort of thing happens. It, it hasn't happened, as I've noticed, on Lee O. Smith's pleasing waterfront uh, sculpture at the levee. And I think that is a fine example of what can be done to a blank wall. However, I don't think even Leo Smith would argue that uh, that in any way takes place or holds the interest of the actual river itself. Now, from my point of view, I, I came to this area from uh, the Twin Cities teaching because I wanted to live in a place that's beautiful. And driving from Fountain City, the, the thing that attracts my eye and the thing that interests me every single day is the changing light. It's not necessarily the river, the river traffic, but what the light does. A box girder bridge uh, will affect what is seen from, from that drive. 
and I believe that it will be a, a less aesthetic and pleasing invitation for people to come over to Minnesota from Wisconsin. Um, I would suggest the Ark Bridge as, as found in Hastings from an aesthetic point of view. It's beautiful, it's interesting. I was on it just last uh, Monday and, and I found it just wonderful to go through. It was open so the river can be seen from the bridge, beyond the bridge. It can uh, be seen through the bridge if you are willing to spend the time looking through and beyond. Uh, that's my recommendation. Whatever you choose to do, I'm sure that things can be done from an aesthetic point of view, and I certainly support a, a strongly functional bridge, um, but I, I'll leave that in your hands, and, and thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? Step to the podium. This is your chance. Uh, Ted Hazelton, I live at 1073 West 5th Street in Winona. I've been a Winona resident since 2000, prior to that, Minnesota City. I cross that bridge several times during the week. I drive a big road. Um, I guess my concern is, before we step uh, forward with this vote, I would like to see some, to have it granted so it can get done with conditions. Uh, I've talked to a couple of council members and the mayor, and my concern is that the uh, illustrations show a shortened bridge landing coming into Winona on the new bridge. Uh, and the incoming traffic, particularly uh, semis during harvest season, coming down on a steeper incline and then to have a light at the bottom with Minnesota winters, how safe is that? I don't think you should have that steep of an incline and shorten up the approach. And then on the opposite side of the bridge, I went out there with my measuring wheel uh, from the end of the approach of the current structure to the two-lane bridge that crosses the next slough into Wisconsin is 675 feet. That's going to create one heck of a bottleneck to funnel two bridges with four lanes into two lanes in 675 feet. Can, uh, try putting yourself in a semi-truck and trying to merge into traffic that's constantly trying to get around you and let alone the turning lane to go to Latch Island. I think that needs to be looked at a little more in depth. Those are my concerns there. Also, um, as D. Sipo suggested, and all the drawings I've ever seen, it's going to create a big cement barrier so you can't see nothing anyway. I would love to see a cable stay bridge or an arch bridge like Hastings, or go to La Crosse. They did that next to the existing bridge, which is almost an identical twin to the one in Winona. It's beautiful. It's, uh, well, it's well known in the uh, region. The Hastings Bridge is going to be fascinating and fantastic when it's done. It's got two lanes open now, but when it's officially totally open, it'll be wonderful. Another bridge to consider that MnDOT should look into is Lowry Avenue in Minneapolis. That was redone. It's a cable stay bridge. The box girder design, yes, it's economical, but it's ugly. Look at 35W, the new bridge. It's the same bridge. I would love to see a beautiful bridge. It's a gateway to the city. <coughs> it's our identity. And I would suggest that go ahead and approve, the, approve it with the conditions that they need to do a little better job of aesthetics and the uh, inclines and the merge area going into Wisconsin. It's going to be a nightmare. 
I know uh, a lot of people don't have the chance to drive a big rig or a ride in one. I'm sure I could arrange it if anybody would like to see what it's like to try to merge with a semi. And then one last note, it looks like there's plans for a stop and go light on 4th and Huff Street. Is that really needed? Does traffic warrant it? That's another expense. And then also, uh, where is all the parking going to go for the YMCA that currently park along 4th and Huff and, and then between, uh, on Winona Street between 4th and 5th Streets? Is that going to be affected as well? In closing, I would encourage that uh, we should go ahead and get something going, but I would like to see conditions attached and have MnDOT spend a little more time with the aesthetics of it, the safety concerns that I raised, or then that I conceive in the foreseeable future that's going to create one heck of a traffic jam and a bottleneck. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? Step up to the podium. Mr. Mayor, council members, my name is David Wurz. I live at 1470 Wee Valley. I've been a, lived in this town all my life. I've watched over the years of how we've destroyed all our historic preservation by not restoring some things. And now we're going to put a box, build bridge, next to a beautiful bridge that I go across twice a week to go golfing over in Walnut Grove. And all I see is it's a beautiful bridge. When I come across it at night, coming back, I see a beautiful bridge. And now we're going to put a box bridge. That's ugly, no good. What we need is an arch bridge, which will aesthetically look real nice and beautiful next to the old bridge. Now, that says in 30 years, we're going to have to replace, refix that bridge. Well, that tells me that they're not doing their job by maintenance, by maintaining the current, cur the current bridge. They're not doing their job maintaining it. So it should last long. Of course, then again, a new bridge, 100 years, nothing will last 100 years. So that might be gone in 50 years because the way our weather is changing every day. But I think we seriously need to look at what we're doing before we jump forward. And MnDOT has already stated at last that meeting last Monday that they had already decided that they were going with a box Box Bridge, last September. That tells me they shoved it down your throats. And that's not right. This town needs to step up and rethink the process because previous administrations have failed. Let's not fail again because this town needs something very beautiful and a box bridge does not do it. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Jack Stoltman. I'm from 876 West Burns Valley Road. I'm very much in favor of the Cable Stay Bridge. Um, I'm just afraid that we're going to make a decision that we're going to be sorry for in the future. I'm glad we're getting a new bridge and it would be a good addition to the city of Winona. But I think like other communities up and down the river, we shouldn't settle for less. I, th I think we have such a beautiful city um, from the Merchants Bank to the, the Winona National Bank to other structures that we should keep going with that. We have the chance to do this and I don't know why the council is pushing this ahead. I, I have respect for your decisions and maybe you have your reasons, but I talk to a lot of people during the week in what I do and I haven't heard anybody that's intrigued by the box structure. I just think we haven't canvassed enough people and not enough people have come forward and talked about it. I think we should table this for a time and find out a way to get the city's real opinion because it's not for the box structured bridge. It looked fine on the picture, but the Cable Stay Bridge is such an amazing bridge and I know you've all have seen them. And I think the state would give us a couple of years even. I, I, I don't care if we have to wait for it. So I'd appreciate you looking at it a second time, just for a little longer. Maybe we could organize and let you know what we really want. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else?
else wish to speak? Anybody else wish to speak? One final time. Anybody else wish to speak? Step to the podium. Uh, hearing that, we'll declare the public hearing closed. <coughs> and uh, a lot of issues were raised here tonight, a lot of questions. I guess I'd like to ask Mr. Ward to step up, and uh, I know you were taking notes. Maybe you could address some of those uh, questions. Thanks, Mayor. Just a few things that I that I heard, and I'll certainly answer any questions that, that you may have. Uh, first of all, we have not selected um, the actual bridge type formally. We have a recommended bridge type. I, I believe I've made that clear in, in the public meetings. And we need to go through the environmental assessment process and have a FONSI or finding of no significant impact issued before we'll have a preferred um, alternate, which is what we'll go build. So just to be clear, we have a recommended bridge type. We haven't, we haven't finalized that process yet until we go through the environmental assessment public hearing. There was some discussion of the existing bridge um, in terms of whether or not it stays, whether or not it gets removed. We are using federal funds. Uh, we are following federal requirements. And to take a step back at this point and, and take a course correction, it's a big change in, in where we are. We have written concurrence from the State Historical Preservation Office on the rehab and reconstruction approach of the existing bridge. We have written concurrence from the State Historical Preservation Office that the new bridge type that we're recommending, the concrete box, meets historical requirements and standards. There was talk of the bridges being terminal or need to be replaced at the end of their design life. I would say that is a misconception. The design life of the different elements of the bridges is when we would likely need to ramp up our investment. So for example, the new bridge, the design life is 100 years. The existing bridge, the approaches to the through truss are 100 years. The through truss itself, the high portion of the existing bridge, the design life is 30 years. At 30 years, we're likely going to have to ramp up our investment in maintaining that structure. That does not mean that at 30 years, we believe we'll have to go out and, and tear it down. It's not the terminal point in that life. We certainly think we'll get beyond 30 years. Where actually that'll take us, That'll, we'll have to have come back together and work with the Winona community on that. Some point in time, there'll have to be a decision made on, is that a structure that MnDOT and our community partners want to keep, or is it a structure that we want to replace? But that's a decision that will come beyond 30 years down the road from our perspective. One gentleman had some concerns about grades. The, the issue of grades is not dependent on new bridge type. The issue of grades is dependent on getting over 3rd Street in terms of vertical clearance. The reason we're going from 4.5% to 5% <coughs> is to try and provide a, a landing area at that intersection of 4th and Winona. We're proposing in our, in our layout roughly 60 feet of a much flatter landing area for traffic to come down. There's, there's very little landing area out there today. If we went, if we kept the grade at four and a half percent, we would basically be matching what's out there today. Very little flat landing area coming into a signal. So again, it's not dependent on bridge type. It's dependent on the vertical clearance over third and then trying to provide some um, land flat landing space at that intersection. Just a couple other things that I'll talk about real quick. Um, first of all, in our layout, we are not depicting the new bridge type. So as you're looking to approve our layout, the new bridge type is not on there. What is on there is all the design features, the geometric features, the, the locations, the proximity, but again, the new bridge type that we're recommending is not on there. Because again, it won't become our preferred alternate in, until we go through the environmental assessment process and get a FONSI issued. I mentioned a couple weeks ago that by granting municipal consent, MINDA believes you're asking us to start some serious investments in the project. For example, right away, final design. 
So in, in granting municipal consent, you know, that's when we will look to really ramp up our investments, including starting the right-of-way process, which we've heard from a number of businesses that are kind of waiting for, for us to, to make our offer so they know financially where they are. I mentioned two weeks ago that we still need a fully executed cooperative agreement to build the project. So this is not the last time we'll be working together and we, we need a fully executed cost agreement before we can actually go build the project. That's an important piece in this process. So we will certainly have to continue to work with city staff and, and council in that regard. There's been quite a bit of momentum on the project started. Uh, I have an environmental assessment document over there. It's a it's single-sided, it's not double-sided, but it's a big, thick document. There's a lot of people behind the scenes that are working some, some, doing some really great things on the projects. We have contractors that are watching to kind of see how things are going. We, we have funding lined up. Those are all important pieces of the puzzle. One last thing I want to talk about is the, the visual impacts of the concrete box. We're not, we're not disputing that the concrete box is going to provide some of the visual impacts. We're not disputing that. At the main channel, the box will be approximately 10 feet high in the, in the middle of the bridge. And at the piers, it'll be approximately 21 feet. So at, again, at the piers, 21 feet, 10 feet in the middle. The box bridge sits roughly 15 feet above the existing bridge in terms of the road surface. So at mid-span, there'll be roughly a five-foot gap underneath the box bridge. The other thing to be mindful of is the existing bridge has roughly five feet for its substructure elements. If you go with a suspended bridge, which is either an arch or a cable stay, their structure depth will be approximately 10 feet. So those structure depths will stick up above the road elevation of the existing bridge as well. So they're not out of the woods themselves in terms of potential visual impacts um, as someone's driving on the existing bridge. With that, I'll, I'll take any questions. Mm -hmm. Pam? Yes. Could you speak to one of, the, one of the speakers talked about the difficulty of driving a truck and merging traffic on both sides. We've got a four-lane bridge coming into two lanes on each end of this. Could you speak to that, please? Yes. Yes, I can. If, if, first of all, we're, as you're going from Winona towards Wisconsin, we're dropping a lane at Latch Island. There's a turn lane, a right turn lane to go into Latch Island. So that's where we're dropping that auxiliary lane, or that, that second lane. Conversely, if you're coming from Latch Island to Winona, we're picking up that lane as you come out of Latch Island across the bridge. The biggest concern that we've heard in our outreach is that people from Winona heading towards Wisconsin, we're dropping that lane across the bridge. And Dave, I'll have you point out kind of the distance and where that is, if, if, if you would, in terms of dropping that lane, that second lane from Winona towards Wisconsin. Sure. As Terry mentioned, we're gonna be carrying two lanes um, on the approach to the, the, the main span. Um, normally you want, as a, a few of the folks mentioned as difficult merging a big tractor trailer right um, you want to have your merging point at a at a point where both lanes of traffic are traveling at about the same speed so it's easier to go in and out it's very difficult to merge in if you're going 20 miles an hour and the adjacent is going 60. so we would want either the merge to happen here where, where folks are driving relatively slow or further up here um, as, the, as the trucks have got a chance to accelerate. Um, they certainly could merge here, but wouldn't have to. So the way, the way that this is set up here is we've, we've got the trucks up over the apex of the curve, and now that they're going downhill, that's when we're asking them to make the merge movement over to this left lane that's the through lane going into Wisconsin. As Terry mentioned, this far right lane is a, is, is a, uh, a turn lane into, into the island area. So I, I presume that the mark 
markings on the surface of the road will direct people. You're, you're counting that the, that the paint and the markings on the surface of the road will direct people. Right. There'll be a going paint stripe there. There'll be a couple signs. Normally there's an advanced sign that says merge left, lane ends. And then there'll be a sign right at the merge point. And then there'll be another sign right in here somewhere saying uh, to Wisconsin, to left island. <coughs> And those are the, the pavement markings and signing. Those are final design type elements that we'll, we'll do once we get into final design. Michelle? I just I wanted to clarify the incline because I understand that our current bridge doesn't actually meet incline standards, correct? It's too steep. Isn't that what came out of the first part of the study of our old bridge? It's, it's already too steep of an incline for coming in where it lands. The, the current grade on the existing bridge coming into town is 4.5%. So we're Eight. actually pushing the new bridge up a little so that it too can land on 4th Street without cutting off access on 3rd, correct? Because the box girder is bigger or heavier, so it would actually restrict truck traffic on 3rd. I'm trying to understand why we're keeping the incline as, as steep on this bridge since we're, we're building it, instead of putting it at a place that's actually more acceptable in the state. The existing bridge, 4.5% grade, coming down to the intersection of 4th and Winona. The, the new grade is 5%, which is half a percent steeper. That still meets our design standards. The one that it's at the upper level of is for bikeways. Uh, the bikeway grade maximum design standard is 5%, so we're right at the max in terms of bike grades, but it still meets our standards. Dave, I don't believe we have a design exception for grades at all. We, we have okay. no design exceptions. So the, the clearance over, th over third, we're, we're actually trying to um, try and slightly increase the vertical clearance over third. That still re will require a variance from council. I think later on tonight, it's, Brian yeah. will present a variance. It still doesn't meet our state aid standards for clearance, but it is slightly better than existing conditions. Brian, is that a fair statement? But that's why the, the bridge is steeper. We're trying to make sure third street doesn't get closed off to traffic. The, the right. half a percent steeper is to try and implement a relatively flat landing area at the intersection of 4th and Winona of approximately 60 feet. There really is, if you go out there today, there really is very little, if any, flat landing distance coming into that intersection. So we're trying to implement a roughly a 60 foot flat landing area that brings that grade back further so that we have to steepen it slightly. Um, thank you for the presentation, the information, and, and I'm sure you've answered this question before, but in looking through my notes and other documents, I guess I haven't seen the answer to it. Um, your new proposed design that's still in flux, but you know, it's your proposed design, why does it have to be higher than the other bridge? The concrete box is, is a different type of structure than a tight arch and a cable stay. A tight arch and cable stay are suspended type structures. They're, th they're thinner in, in terms of depth. The concrete box starts out at the piers, I mentioned roughly 21 feet thick, and it's cantilevered out as it's built, and it gets thinner in the middle. But at, at the piers, we need a minimum of 60 foot of clearance over the normal pool elevation for navigational purposes from the Coast Guard. Mm. Out at the middle, mm. we need 62 and a half feet, which we're above. But it's really driven on the type of bridge, the concrete segmental box. Again, it's thicker at the piers and it gets thinner because it's cantilevered structurally. It's based on the horizontal curvature of the roadway, or excuse me, the vertical curvature of the roadway. And again, and again, it's a different st type of bridge than a suspended type bridge, so it is a thicker structure in general. So are there other bridge designs then that could be <coughs> built at the same level as the current bridge, as far as the roadway is concerned? The arch and cable stay would be much closer to the existing bridge elevation, but again, they would even stick up slightly because the existing bridge the depth of the substructure is roughly five feet, the beams. Mm -hmm. The arch and cable stay, the depth would be roughly 10 feet, so they would still stick up slightly, but not anywhere near as much as the concrete box. Okay, thank you. George had George. Thank you. Uh, 
Thanks again for being here. Uh, I posed this question last time you were here, and I'm going to try to pose it tonight maybe a little bit differently. Uh, if we go ahead and grant consent tonight to go ahead with the project, can we totally leave the type of bridge out of it? You know, we got the box girder, the cable stay, uh, the arch. Can we give consent for you to go ahead, but we'll leave the bridge structure out of it till you get further along the process? Is that a possibility? From from MnDOT perspective, that's completely up to the council. You you can do that if you want. And again, the 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 new structure type will definitely be part of the EA public hearing. It's it's part of our EA. It's in there. I've, I've read it. And that whole discussion of bridge type can take place in the formal public hearing for the environmental assessment yet this fall. So that is definitely a choice the council could make. Again, because we are not depicting the new bridge type in the layout, and by municipal consent, you are approving our layout. Okay, but the bridge is not in that layout. It's not, it's not, it's not in there. Are we looking of any lengthy delay of the project if we were to choose a design outside of the box uh, girder style? Several things would have to happen. I mean, I don't have an exact answer of how long that would delay, but several things would have to happen. Number one, we'd have to come together and find the funding. I've mentioned before, 14 to $15 million, and the longer that takes, the more funding is gonna grow for inflation. <coughs> Secondly, we would have to take a step back and, and redo our environmental assessment and our public outreach and, and start that whole process over. How long that takes, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. The toughest issue could be the funding. You know, where is that funding going to come from? How is that going to come together? Michelle? Assuming we took that route, um, would the bridge have to be rehabbed in the, it, let's say it took a year or two longer because we decided we want a different bridge? Is our bridge going to be fine, the current bridge? Does it have to have any rehab done in the course of that scheduling that would shut it down for any length of time. Yeah, the question, if I understood it, is what's the condition of the existing bridge and what's the likelihood of something happening out there? If I, if I could, in, in 2008, an in-depth inspection found deterioration of gusset plates, um, 15 plates were actually repaired at that time. It was shut down. 2009, there was an inspection that noted the bearings of one of the piers should be considered for replacement and rehab. <laughs> Under deck delaminations, a June 2010 visit revealed gusset plates in need of immediate repair. Um, they were made, the bridge was posted. A routine and fracture critical inspection in June identified maintenance, monitoring, and countermeasure recommendations, but no emergency repair recommendations. So just a summary of the condition. Overall, the bridge is currently functional. Necessary monitoring of the bridge will continue to look at any new developments. Strain gauges have been placed on the truss spans to monitor structural response to loads, so there's strain gauges out there. Although repair projects over the last few decades have assisted in extending the life of the bridge, it is time for a higher level of investment in the structure as further deterioration is expected to take place over the next several years. The gusset plate repairs were sufficient to address the spot deterioration, but further deterioration is expected to continue into the future and develop at other locations. Plating over corroded areas creates inaccessibility to the sandwiched uh, original plate for inspection and further deterioration. The existing foundations consist of timber piles. There's no practical means to directly determine the current load carrying capacity of the existing timber pile foundations. In 2010, the deck rating was downgraded to fair due to excessive cracking, leaching, and areas of underdeck delamination. The superstructure was downgraded to poor due to severe deterioration of the steel truss members. The bridge is also scour critical, which means high river flows have the potential to cause undercuts to the pier foundations due to previous scour history and shallower than normal piling relative to foundations that would be designed today in this reach of the Mississippi River. 
the Winona Bridge is monitored for scour by MnDOT. So this is this is just a condition of the bridge. This is in our EA. That's you know I, I can't speculate on what may or may of happen. Of course, I just I just yeah. wondered if it was scheduled for or was going to have to be shut down for any length of time throughout this process, or if we thought it would make the what is it a year or two for the new bridge to be developed, I mean built. I just wondered what the maintenance plans were or shut down or how this might affect that or if it might increase costs of replacement or repair if we push the project out further. With our current schedule, we're, we're scheduled to switch traffic onto the new bridge in fall of 2016. If, if we get delayed, that gets delayed. And obviously, I would think with the report I read, the likelihood of you know, some, some issues out there that cause shutdown of the bridge increase as well. Thank you. Paul? I just want to be, uh, make sure I'm clear that the fact that by approving everything but the final design of the bridge and the st structure itself, everything can move forward, including land acquisition and planning, and that the decision on the final design of the bridge will still be uh, open. That is correct. Okay. We and will, I'm, once we obtain municipal consent, assuming we do, we will initiate our right-of-way process and make yeah. offers in one to two months. Everything else will continue forward. And I would move for that municipal consent with that exception. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? George? Uh, just another question for, for Terry. Let's say once this new bridge is built, and you begin work on rehabilitating the other bridge and all of a sudden, you know, you're looking more and more and, you know, it ain't worth it. What is, what is the plan then? Maybe whatever money you have, it's now doubled and maybe that bridge just is not uh, in the condition to be rehabilitated. What happens then? We, uh, you know, one of the reasons to use this Construction manager, general contractor, CMGC, is to get a contractor on board early. So we'll definitely get that contractor out there early, start looking at the project, and try as best we can to foresee any of those issues before we get into them. We're not, we're not going to know everything we're going to get into out there because, again, we mentioned some of the plates are sandwiched. We have a pretty good idea, though. And the other thing is anything we do on that structure, we have a, a programmatic agreement with SHPO that if we make any changes, we need to engage them. So uh, to answer your question, we're committed to rehab that through trust. We're going to bring a contractor on early to help us assess the risk and to try and minimize the potential of getting out there and having real significant cost growth. But we are committed to rehabbing that existing um, through trust. Thank you. Discussion or questions? I guess I'd like to say that uh, I'd like to say thank you to Terry and MnDOT for all the work they've done and all the public meetings they've <coughs> held. And um, I've certainly heard from a lot of people that um, are not real happy about the box girder design. Um, I've also heard from people that have told me they like it, and I've also heard from a lot of people that probably don't care so much about the design, but they think it's important that this bridge project move forward as quickly as possible. And uh, I guess I agree with that. A year ago, uh, my predecessor joined uh, Congressman Walls and Governor Dayton and members of this community and asked MnDOT to accelerate this project and uh, get this bridge built for Winona. And I think it's important. I think shockwaves went through this community when we had to uh, shut down our old bridge, and none of us want to see that happen. Um, I personally, I'm very proud of the fact that I think we have one of the prettiest bridges along the Mississippi River, and that view uh, would be maintained by the proposed design. And so I don't particularly have a real problem with the design as it's proposed. I think it's uh, minimal impact on the historic bridge, as we talk about the view from uh, Levy Park and downtown during the Priest of Ragnar or other visitors to our town. This would have the least impact on that and keeping the skyline as it is. And, uh, I think we should celebrate the fact that this bridge, this beautiful bridge that we have, is going to be there for a very long time. And I don't think it's going to be torn down at 30 years or 40 years or 50 years. I think it's going to be something that will increase in value and, and respect for the people 
of this community, and I think we're going to want to keep that bridge for as long as we can. And I'm, I, I would urge the council to go ahead and provide this municipal consent tonight because I think the community wants to know what's going to happen, especially those property owners that are going to be affected by this. And I hope that uh, uh, the vote will be uh, supportive. So just wanted to say that. And if I, any, no other comments, uh, we'll put it to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, signify by so Pam. So we are, we are accepting, we are not approving tonight the design. We are the not, bridge, no. Just the municipal consent. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Unanimous. The next public hearing is item 2.2. The basic wetland application for the Winona Municipal Airport. Hey, the meeting's not over, folks. A couple hours to go. Please join us. <laughs> Faster when I said that. We don't want to get trapped. <laughs> the door shuts. You're stuck. <clears throat> Ooh, a traffic jam. Um, Monica needs new batteries, so we're uh, oh, <laughs> waiting a second here for her to return. <laughs> for city clerk. Questions or comments about this item? Anybody wish to speak to it? It is public hearing. Oh, this is public hearing. Off your right. <laughs> okay, I forgot. Declare this public hearing open. Anybody wish to speak? Please do. <laughs> uh, the, uh, this item is, I think, pretty well summarized in your agenda package. And um, as council knows, during the past number of years, the city, in cooperation with the FAA, has been working on a number of uh, safety and facility improvements at the airport. Uh, we noted that back in 2010, we had done a, a wetland delineation of the area, which was designed simply to define where wetlands are located. Um, most recently, the scope of projects have been pretty well defined, and in overlaying those on top of that delineation, um, we have determined that a total impact, wetland impact at the airport um, is expected to be 5.28 acres. Of those, um, a half an acre will fall under the jurisdiction of the DNR, and um, they will be requiring, uh, we did get a permit last week uh, about this, but they will be requiring um, the city to uh, mitigate a one acre parcel um, at the airport site. Uh, the remaining 4.7 acres falls under WACA jurisdiction, and um, that is the purpose of um, the hearing tonight, is that 4.7 acres. Um, given the finding that wetlands existed, um, a basic wetland application was submitted and um, that generally what that application does is to re, um, request council approval to impact the 4.78 acres and to uh, replace or mitigate uh, that acreage um, at a, uh, a Bowser designated uh, wetland bank. Uh, did come to you uh, back in June with a potential purchase agreement uh, with the landowner of that bank. Um, and we did enter into a purchase agreement to, to acquire those credits. And we noted in the agenda package that that total uh, number is $152,321. Um, 
4.7 acres uh, times two is what we have to replace. So um, these credits have become very expensive over the years, but they are also necessary in order to get this project moving forward. Uh, without this approval, the project cannot move forward. Um, the uh, wetland application was reviewed by the technical evaluation panel. Um, their recommendation is to approve uh, the application. So this recomm recommendation is not coming from staff, it's coming from them. And um, they, uh, given their approval, um, what they're doing is sanctioning the, the, the application, um, the thought process given to uh, the need to replace wetlands, and uh, the mitigation plan, which is to acquire acreage uh, from the wetland bank. Um, so our recommendation to you is to uh, um, uh, concur with their recommendation by adopting the attached resolution in your agenda package. Questions? Comments? Yeah, this is a much more serious business than the bridge. It's like twice as thick. <laughs> and it costs less. It's, yeah. it's weighty what right. you're giving us. Yeah. Trees. Right. Well, could you explain, I think, for the public and some of us how this uh, land purchase where you've got to buy wetland <coughs> somewhere else in the world? Um, under state law, uh, the Wetland Conservation Act, we can acquire um, mitigation land uh, within our, the same service area. It uh, doesn't mean we, we can go anywhere in the state, but it has to be down here in the southeast part of Minnesota. And uh, it just so happens that within this service area, we do have a number of banks available. Um, those banks have been set up uh, by private property owners in cooperation with the Board of Water and Soil Resources. Um, so they are certified by Bowser. And um, so for projects like this then, um, what the city can do is to actually buy credits uh, from a bank. And um, that's used then to replace the wetlands that are lost um, at the Winona Airport. But uh, so to answer your question, we can't buy these anywhere in the state. They, banks exist all over the state, but. Um, we're only eligible to acquire these in this service area, uh, which in part includes this particular bank. So, other questions? Uh, I had uh, I had a question uh, regarding the access and water quality at uh, Riley Lake. Mm -hmm. Okay, so people do love that Riley Lake, and they like they turn off of Bartlett Lake Road, and and that is somewhere in here. I believe, I believe. And so will this proposed uh, runway grading or er, runway safety area, will that affect either access to that lake or no. water quality in the lake? It will not, no. And again, this is the, uh, the purpose of having the TAP involved with this. Uh, typically, um, DNR and core representatives are not involved with a TAP, but we made them part of this one because of the, the environment that exists out there. Uh, the DNR, um, again, is requiring the mitigation of that half acre um, only because Riley's Lake is a public water and um, the area that's being disturbed is located with, below the high, normal high water mark. So they then take jurisdiction over that area. <coughs> um, and um, they're, they're fine with um, simply mitigating, um, again, a two to one ratio, one acre um, at a small site at the at the airport. And this will be located just north and a little bit west of the uh, the north end of the runway, the west end of the runway. Sorry, um, but that type of mitigation um, will have to be will be a city expense also. And um, we are acquiring these wetland credits for fifteen thousand dollars an acre uh, by today's standards. That's cheap, and. Um, it will probably cost more to mitigate that area than it will to acquire credits, but this is what the DNR is required to do. They have to replace wetlands that are lost with the same form and function wetland, and that means something in that area. So we're looking at two mitigation strategies. Okay. Thank you. Is there anybody that wishes to speak to step up to the podium? Just making sure. Anybody here want to speak to this? One more time, last chance.
wish to speak to this? Hearing none, we'll close the public hearing. I'd move to adopt the attached resolution. Second. Motion by Al and a second by Michelle. Further discussion? Just to comment, Mayor and folks, I, I was uh, very impressed with, as uh, Council Person Alexander was, with the depth of information about what the process is and what we have to go through and how mitigation works. And I learned a few wor new words. Uh, there's a word in there called P-S-A-M-M-E-N-T-S. -M -M -E I believe it's pronounced Samets, which means sandy soil. So it was educational. I mean, I, I really am impressed with the detail. I mean, it's, it really covers a lot of uh, the, uh, the issues here, and uh, I'm happy to support uh, the uh, resolution. Any other comments? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Under the petitions, requests, and communications, item 3.1 is the Cotter Schools 5K on Saturday, September 21st. Okay, bro. Second. Motion by Jerry, second by Michelle. Any comments? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item 3.2 is a request by the Mississippi River Revival for the use of Latch Island Beach for their annual cleanup on Saturday, September 7th. I look to approve that request. I would second Motion that. Motion by Michelle, second by Pam. Any discussion? Just a comment. No. It's 33 years as noted by our agenda item, and uh, they do a great job. And uh, It's a river, so it's going to always have stuff in it to be pulled out. So I'm glad they do that and thank them for their job. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Item 3.3 <coughs> is the REACH request for camping at Lake Park for their sixth annual tour of hope on Friday, October 25th through Sunday, October 27th. Move to approve that request. Motion by Michelle. Second that. Second by Pam. Uh, why do they feel the need to camp there? I guess. Uh, Mayor and Council, I believe their strategy is they walk around the lake continuously okay. and they place signs around the bike path as well. Okay. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. The next item has been postponed at the request of the business owner that cannot make it tonight. So we are on item 3.5 is the memorial donation at the Municipal Harbor in honor of Dick Cams. Move to, move to approve uh, that request. I'll second. Moved by George, seconded by Michelle. Discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Under new business, item 5.1 is to set the date for the public hearing. To consider the resolution to levy assessments for unpaid charges, the hearing would be on September 16th, and distributed this evening was an updated assessment list. Move to set the date. Second. Motion by Jerry, second by Michelle. Any discussion? George? Just, just one note to inform the public that uh, that includes uh, unpaid water bills, sewer bills, uh, all other assessments and frozen water meter assessments and it's for two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars that's a lot of water or garbage or garbage in all those things so that's a lot of unpaid bills and judy when we figured like the levy was it sixty thousand for one percentage point it's close so we have what here about uh six percentage points quite a bit all those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. <coughs> Item 5.2 is the Riverfront Development District for the airport project. I'll move to approve that. Motion by Michelle. Oh, second. Second by Al. Discussion? Hearing none. We'll vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Curious. Item 5.3 is to set the public hearing to consider assessments for the removal of hazardous structure at 868 East 5th. The hearing would be held on September 16th. I'd move to approve setting that um, public hearing. Motion by Michelle. Second that. Seconded by Pam. Discussion? Mm -hmm. uh, 
Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carries. Item 5.4 is the Winona Public Library Water Intrusion Mitigation. I move to approve the tax resolution. Second. Motion by Michelle, seconded by George. Discussion? George? Uh, just a comment as we're on words tonight, usually it would be water leakage, but tonight we have water intrusion, and I, I like that. I do too. So that's a, that's a good way of putting it. My home was intruded by <laughs> water. <laughs> Not a criminal, just water. I actually, I'd probably rather have a criminal than water intrusion. So. Any other discussion? Uh, just that? a comment, uh, you know, uh, has there been any determination of the source of the water? Is it all runoff, or is it a result of another structure that's near the building, or uh, will these repairs mitigate those uh, intrusions? <laughs> Uh, Mayor and Council, I think what you're referring to, Al, is um, it did it did talk about the existence of groundwater near the building. And so we do know around there. That correct. And so we do know. Yeah, we do know that uh, the uh, old middle school building and the Washington Crossing building certainly does create water from those buildings. Mm -hmm. It uh, it does accumulate in the back uh, parking lot, which is the actual south west corner of the sure. building. So the plan does include having a uh, catch basin, mm -hmm. and then again to tile it out to the, to the, okay. to the stormwater. Do we know exactly where it's coming from? No. We'll, we probably have a better idea when we do some excavation. Yes. Okay. Thanks, Chad. George? Is that to begin this year yet? Mayor and Council, our, our hope tonight, bringing it to you tonight, is that we do that this year before uh, any ground freeze so that we can get this project moving and okay. to stop any you know, continuation of water into the building. And so, yes, we would, we want to move on this as quickly as possible. Was this put out for bids? Uh, we would go out for quotes based on the engineer's estimate. We don't need to go out for sealed bids, but we would go out for quotes. Okay. And is this work going to be approved by the, the SHPO office? Um, I don't, I don't think for this work, because we're not changing any, um, any structural feature of the building that it requires the SHPO um, agreement or um, it approval. It probably doesn't, but I'm just asking, I guess, if you'd check. Sure, we can, do that. we can double check. Okay. Yep. Any other discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carried. Item 5.5 .5 is the state aid variance request for 3rd Street under the proposed bridge. I would move to introduce the attached resolution. I would second. Motion by George, second by Michelle. <coughs> um, Brian, do you have anything to add? No, it's, it's a pretty minor variance. Uh, on the far south curb line, it's 14. Four and three quarters, and it's supposed to be or fourteen three and three quarters. And it's supposed to be fourteen six. We're talking that much on not the travel lane. In the travel lane, it's fine. So it's a state aid route, so therefore we have to go to the variance committee. If this was a city street, we probably wouldn't even spend any time on it. <coughs> all right. Any other comments? We need to vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Item 5.6 is the agreement for state aid for the airport maintenance and operation. I move to approve the attack resolution. Second. Motion by Michelle, seconded by Al. Discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Carried. Item 7.1 is council concerns. And I think we'll start with George this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, my comment on wanting water intrusion or a criminal, I don't want either. I, I had a criminal in the driveway once and my truck was gone for a few days, so uh, no, uh, no intrusion from any of those. Uh, I would just like to wish uh, a healthy recovery to Chuck Lushick, uh, owner of Sloppy Joe's Bar, uh, who had a little incident there a week ago, a week and a half ago. He got hurt trying to separate uh, uh, a confrontation and he ended up 
with a broken leg, and I wish him well, and he'll uh, be, be a while before he's healed up 100%, but I, I wish him well and, and a speedy recovery. And also, on a happier note, uh, happy belated birthday to Councilman Al Thurley. <laughs> thank you, George. Saturday, I guess, so. Yes. That's all, thank you. Pam? I uh, want to know if uh, if there's any results from the research into the nuisance factors of backyard campgrounds, that back, back, backyard campfires. Uh, a couple of meetings ago I talked about having received some complaints from people who were, who were being kind of smoked out of their own neighborhood. And I know that the city, uh, city ordinances are, uh, apply only to fire prevention aspects of backyard <coughs> campfires, not the nuisance factors believe the city was going to look into that. Okay. Apparently not. <laughs> we'll get back. So Judy we'll said get she'd back. get back. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you. Paul? I am uh, concerned uh, over the past few weeks about some of the words we've got from the city of Detroit and other areas where cities have approved labor agreements and that of which they could not fund into the future at the risk of people who are now retired in that. And I would like to really see, I know that Winona's situation has been that we've been very financially um, strong and financially um, frugal in what we've done. But I think too often it's uh, taken by boards to pass on to future boards uh, labor agreements which have financial consequences into the future out beyond their term of office. And I would like to see some serious consideration that if elected bodies pass labor agreements in particular into the future that are not fully funded by them during office or the mechanism, and they vote in the affirmative of that labor contract, that they be personally liable. Anything else? No. Okay. Michelle? No, just again, I was going to wish um, Al a happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, George, I just have a question. Do you know every bar owner in town? <laughs> <laughs> I think since I've been on council, <laughs> you wished happy birthday or get wells or condolences to just about every bar owner. And I'm just curious how many years it takes to become that familiar with the, the bar well, owner. About three months. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> Jerry? Nothing. Al? Uh, just uh, thanks uh, and appreciation. and. Um, uh, to uh, Myron Hogg and the Winona Municipal Band. Uh, they concluded their 10 concert series, minus one because of the heat, uh, at the Lake Park Band Shell last Wednesday. Uh, the group, I think, keeps getting better and better every year, and it's a, it's a great program. I know we're going to go into budget discussions on Wednesday, and, and I can tell you right now that that band budget better not be changed at all, because uh, I certainly will not. <laughs> want to see anything happen to uh, the funding for our band. It's a great program. It's been going on. The band has been around in one form or another since 1915. So uh, the band shell has been around since 1924. And uh, it's, it's a great uh, part of our community. And Councilman Borzikowski, I want to wish you a happy birthday on Thursday. Oh, Thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you. Facebook works wonders, George. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got to learn how to work it. <laughs> And under the consent agenda, there are five items. The approval of the minutes from August 5th, the final adoption of an ordinance to vacate Bridge Street, the final adoption of an ordinance to issue general obligation economic, economic development bonds for the Winona Municipal Airport, the ordinance to amend the membership of the historic of the Heritage Preservation Commission, and a claim filed against Jack David Taylor by the City of Winona for a bus accident. Move to approve the consent uh, agenda. Second. Motion by Al, seconded by Michelle. Discussion? Hearing none will vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Mayor, I move we adjourn. Second. All, all those in favor of adjourning say aye. 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 aye.